so I wanted a chance to tell you guys. Um, I'm out of here tomorrow. Everything's good. Um, I'll be leaving here in probably about 11 a.m. tomorrow, something like that. Um, I just wanted to t tell you, if you have never had MRSA, it's for real. Um, I know, you know, it's a fairly common thing, but let me tell you what it did to me. Um, so, I don't even know how I got it, to be honest with you. Um, and it, um, I put on a couple pounds since I've been in the hospital because I can't move. I can't do anything. Plus, I got stitches in my foot now. Uh, essentially, this bacteria, for lack of better terms, it's a smart bacteria. And it, um, it figures out where it wants to colonize, like where the weakest point in your body is, and it goes there, and that's where it attacks you. For those of you who know, I'm, a, I'm an amputee, and my foot, my right foot, is probably the weakest point in my body, and that's true. It has been since the amputation. Um, it's, you know, and it will probably be forever because it's just the way it is. So anyway, so what happened is um, I don't even didn't even know I had anything wrong with me, and I went to the um, I went to bed. I woke up one morning and I couldn't walk because my foot was about twice the size of, that it normally is. Um, and I was running a fever, not feeling good. Um, well, I thought maybe I just sprained my foot because I went to the gym like the day before. I thought maybe I just sprained something and didn't know and it just took a minute to flare up or so. I don't know. Um, but it was much more serious than that, obviously. And so, um, so the next day I go to the hospital. The first time the ambulance driver or the ambulance, the, uh, they turned me down for taking me and I had to call back again. I'm like, dude, I need to go. I need to go now. And I need to be with someone like a medical, medically supervised person. I'm in trouble. And so they took me. I get to the hospital. They start testing me for COVID because they were pretty convinced I had COVID. And uh, I was too. Um, well, I tested negative for COVID. But I'm down there, whatever. And I come up to my room here the same room I'm in now and things got real bad that night um, I went into septic shock had a fever of 103.1 um, and my kidneys started to shut down <laughs> um And the doctors were coming in and they were just throwing all kinds of medicine at me. They were just hitting me with everything, all the fluids and everything they could pump into me, dude, to just to kind of keep me, to keep me alive. Um, they were in and out every few minutes. And just it wasn't getting any better and so they did some kind of ultrasound or something and my kidney my kidneys were were shutting down dude um, and if you looked at all my vital signs my everything was going crazy and in the background the rest of my body was just quitting um,
So after, you know those IV bags you get when you go to the hospital. Um, after about 16 or 17 of them, my kidneys kind of jumped back into um, doing what they were supposed to do. And, but then we had a problem of, I was now retaining all the fluids. I wasn't letting anything go. My body was just, everything that they were putting in me, my body was just taking it and not giving anything. I, I not going to the bathroom, nothing. My body was just holding on to all of it. And it's probably because my body was just like, oh shit, we're in trouble. We need everything we can get. Um, and um, so after about two days or so of that, I started being able to have bowel movements and urinate again. Um, my kidneys started functioning normally. Uh, you know, we had the three surgeries on my foot. I just had my final surgery to make sure that all the MRSA was removed um, today, actually. On the process of that, what happened was uh, the MRSA very badly attacked my right leg. And so all the muscles on my right leg, as the doctor explained to me, as the surgeon explained, um, she said that essentially the reason why my legs are different size now is because it essentially my muscles turned off um, to kind of save the tissue. They turned off to make sure that there was less tissue to infect um, and to help my body be able to fight more, you know what I'm saying? So I lost a good 70% of muscle mass in my in my right calf. My right thigh is still the same, uh, but my right calf is completely, you know, I have one that has like solid definition and the other one it looks like a fucking noodle arm or a noodle leg, I guess. Um, and she said it'll take about six months for my leg to fully recover. <laughs> um, and that's after the infection is fully out. Then my muscles will kind of turn back on. And she said going to the gym will help, but it's going to take about six months. This MRSA really messed me up. It almost killed me. Spending so much time running away from COVID <laughs> and worried about the coronavirus and MRSA just came out of nowhere and smacked me right in my mouth. And I don't even know how I got it. I don't know how, what happened, but I know that it's nothing to play with. And within a span of two days, it almost took my life. I was legitimately scared. I, coming into the hospital, I looked right at the doctors and nurses and said, I feel like I'm going to die. You know what kind of feeling that is? You know what kind of feeling that is? And I, I, wanna, I wanna stop here for a second because I know the person that continues to call my phone all the time is subscribed to this channel. I know who it is. There's a person I want you guys to know. It calls my phone probably about 30 or 40 times a day. No joke. Maybe, maybe a little bit less. Maybe 20 times or 15, 20 times, something like that. But over the span of a year, they've called me probably thousands of times. And they're calling me more throughout this process, knowing that I'm in the hospital, knowing what I just went through. You're not bothering me. 
But the real question should be is, is how bad is your life? How bad is your life that you have to continuously bug someone else, especially during a time where you know that something serious just happened to them? Seriously. And I really want you to consider that. I'm not trying to insult you, but I want you to consider how happy you are in your own life knowing that you have to try to harass somebody who just went through something like this to make yourself feel better to get a laugh. Maybe. Now, you want to prank call me? Fine, dude. But maybe address those own, maybe address those issues in your own life. Maybe find out what's making you so unhappy and address that. If, if you want to prank call me, dude, prank call me. Whatever. Do what you want to do. What I'm saying is, is Evaluate your own reasoning in your own life first and look at what's making you do that and what's making you think that's okay. Because that's the problem. The problem ain't you calling me, dude. I don't care if you call me. Anyway. So. Um, so that I say all that to say this. Things got real, and they got real, real quick. Life changed in, in, in seconds. Tomorrow's never, you know, tomorrow's never guaranteed, man. I mean, my life went crazy this week, or well, last week. I finally get to go home tomorrow to my family and my, you know, my pets, which are my family, <laughs> in my own bed and live in my own world. I'm going to be out of work for a while. And I got another one of these nifty little things, pick line, that I'll have in my arm for six weeks. That I'm going to have to get antibiotics fed through uh, to me, uh, you know. Um. Um, just, just know things went crazy, um, but I'm okay. All right. Anyway, I'm going to wait for my food to get here some food and uh, I'm gonna eat and I'm going to start getting my stuff packed up ready for tomorrow so I can get out of here because I'm gonna go home later